So um, this is version 4.7 of GPVDM, and I'm about to release this um, tomorrow or the next day, so it'll be online quite soon. Um, Windows versions first, Linux versions to follow, probably. Um, the major change in this version, or there's been quite a few major changes to the back end of um, this model. And uh, the first major and obvious change to the user, or maybe not so obvious, but it is a major change, is this interface has been rewritten um, using a different back end. So the back end I was using to generate all these icons and menus and drop down menus and things like that was previously was called GTK uh, 2.6 or 2.7. And that wasn't really being developed anymore. So I decided to switch the whole um, infrastructure that generates this interface to something called QT, um, which is being maintained actively and is very cross-platform. And with any luck, this will enable me also to push out Mac versions of this software as well. Um, so effectively, it's been a whole rewrite of the whole UI, but there's not much changed um, in terms of the appearance. Um, the one thing that has changed is this uh, window. This uh, picture of the device is now uh, is now generated by OpenGL, so it's all properly 3D rendered. So hopefully, that'll give me some more flexibility later to make um, it easier to edit the device structure, maybe with a mouse or something. Um, in terms of the back end, so I've made some quite major changes to the back end. Previously, the model was a, a 1D model, so it solves basically a 1D um, slice down your device. And um, this was good for solar cells and things like that and simple structures, but it was no good for doing more complex structures like um, uh, FETs, for example, that have multiple contacts and are certainly a sort of a two or three dimensional structure. Um, so what I've done is I've I've changed the back end. So I've I've made it from a 1D model into a 3D model. So I've sort of made all the arrays 3D and it can hold all the information in 3D and it sol it solves equations in, in 3D. There's some bits I'm missing to make it properly work, but the point is I've updated all the input files and I've changed all the all the sort of the mechanics of the code to handle lots of 3D devices. So the next so this version will be hopefully compatible with lots of previous versions, whereas 4.44 well, won't be compatible with this. So if you're quite happy with 4.44, I'd say stick to it at the moment. But if you're sort of you know uh, new to using GPVDM, I would say um, start with this version because it'll be more future compatible. So you can see sort of um, the 3Dness of the model if you were to look at the mesh editor. So this, this is the mesh, mesh editor, I've changed it a little bit. Now we've got these 1, 2 and 3D buttons. So the moment we're simulating a, a 1D device, but if we pop it onto 2D, we can see the device is now cut up into sort of a 2D grid. And what's also happened, as you'll notice, this, um, this contact, this top contact, initially it was just one slab, and now it's been separated out into two slabs of aluminium or, or whatever. We can also go to 3D just by clicking that button. Um, and these are effectively contacts. So for simulating structures like FETs, it's very important to have three contacts on your device. And uh, we can define as many contacts we want using this um, contacts editor. So hopefully, once I put in a bit more code, we'll be able to simulate FETs and things like that to more complicated de device structures. Um, yeah. But as I say, back-end infrastructure is there at the moment, So, um, but it's not all fully working yet. Uh, let's put this on Monday. Now, um, the other thing that um, this has changed a little bit for users is that previously, when you ran the mo when you ran the model on model under Windows, there was no terminal. So, when you ran it like this, the output here was um, sent to the command window, which is a little bit messy. So what I've done now is I've implemented, or I was forced to implement, um, really, because of how Qt works, um, this my own terminal window. And it means all the output from the model is actually now captured into the graphical user interface, so it's a bit easy to see. And if you've got multiple CPUs, um, it'll actually just be able to run multiple, uh, multiple copies of the model at the same time, and you'll see the output split up here, which is a bit nicer than it was before. 
Um, apart from that, the model's pretty much the same. Um, apart from this, uh, this image is a little bit nicer with sort of better 3D representation. That's it. I'm going to be releasing this in the next couple of days, and then hopefully, you know, maybe n nearer Christmas, I'll put in um, more functionality, um, so we'll be able to do FETs and more complex structures. So that's it. Thanks very much.